This is going to be the lecture over 26.7. X-ray diffraction. So let's say you got a crystal here that has its atoms arranged in a lattice uh, in a regularly repeating pattern that can serve as a three-dimensional diffraction grating for X-rays. Uh, this will have wavelengths of the same order of magnitude as the lattice spacing. So, you know, this might be, say, a crystal of salt or something like that. Something that has all of the atoms arranged uh, pretty well in the same pattern with the same distance uh, away from them, from each other. Um, so this is going to serve as, a, as a, uh, a lattice that is going to have the ability to produce uh, the same effect as a diffraction grating like we saw in the last section. And the distance here is going to be about 10 to the minus 10th uh, meters, so pretty small. So the scattered x-rays emerging from the crystal form an interference pattern. So you got an x-ray tube. Uh, so you got x-rays being produced here on the lead screen. Comes through some sort of thin crystal, which is going to have your, um, your diffraction grating and some x-ray crystals are scattered as they pass through it, forming an interference pattern on the film. Uh, most of the x-rays pass straight through the crystal. Uh, and so this is the kind of diffraction pattern that you would see out of different types of crystals. So you got sodium ions here, you've got chlorine uh, chloride ions here. And this uh, spacing of adjacent uh, ions is about 0.282 nanometers. So for convenience, the ions are represented as spheres, although the, their electron clouds actually overlap a little bit. And this is the most experimental tool, uh, most important experimental tool in the investigation of the crystal structure of solids. Uh, atomic spacing of crystals can be measured precisely, and the lattice structure of complex crystals can be determined. X-ray diffraction also plays an important role in studies of liquids and organic molecules. And it's one of the chief experimental techniques used in working out the double helix structure of DNA. So you can see here the X-ray diffraction pattern against on Rubisco, uh, which plants use to fix atmospheric carbon dioxide into uh, carbohydrate. So yeah, there is a, there is an application for a lot of the stuff that you're uh, that you're learning about, and these were discovered. Uh, X-rays were of course discovered by William Rankin uh, in 1895, and uh, this suggested they were electromagnetic waves uh, with wavelengths on the order of 10 to the minus 10 meters. And then the idea began to emerge: the atoms in a crystalline solid are arranged in a lattice in repeating patterns with spacing between adjacent atoms also on that order. So when you throw the two ideas together, you've got uh, a proposition in 1912 that a crystal might serve as a kind of three-dimensional diffraction grating for x-rays. That is that a beam of x-rays might be scattered uh, by the individual atoms in a crystal, and the scattered waves might interfere just like waves from a diffraction grating. 